Hey everybody, what's up? Chuck here, PowerAxe.com. Alright, here's my dilemma. Coming home from work Wednesday night, well, getting ready to leave work, started up, Jeep running like crap. My old 1991 uh, YJ. It done this once before. I drove probably, I don't know, four or five miles. It quit, it ran smooth. Everything's been good for, I don't know, well over a month. Well, it did again last night. Now, I drive about 32 miles one way. It ran like crap the whole 32 miles on the way home. So, I'm suspecting, well, the first time I suspected, I got a little, first time it did that, and it cleared up after four or five miles. I got online researching a little bit. So it seems to be, possibly, it could be the uh, O2 sensor going out. And, but what they said, it will run until it warms up, and then it'll clear up and everything runs fine. It's just that the O2 sensor has a heater built inside of it. Once that uh, O2 sensor gets up to temp where it can properly read fuel mixtures, it clears up. Well, it didn't clear up all the way home, so I ended up dropping by my dad's on the way to the, uh, back to my house. Dropped by my dad's and grabbed his TJ, left my YJ at his place until I got a day off where I could work on it. Well, I've got here at the house now, and it was throwing a check engine code on the way home, so we're going to look at the check engine codes. And, I don't know. The next thing we can do is uh, let me change camera angles and I'll show you guys how to do that. I just want to get so I can better demonstrate to y'all how it was doing. The watch the, I'm going to show you something on the paper here. If I can get the, yeah. See, first it's, 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 blah, 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 sorry. it's flashing a 12. What it's doing is going flash, short pause, flash, flash, long pause. Then the next series of flashes is the 33. It's going to go flash, 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 short pause, flash, 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 indicating two digits. The short pause indicates the, the breaking of the two digits, so it's a 33. The next one it did was a 13. So it did a long pause between 33 and the 13. So after the long pause, it went flash, short pause, flash, flash, flash. Then it did a long pause, and then it came in with a code 62. Now I looked at my sheet, and that 62 sounds totally left field to me. Now the 12, common. What the 12 is, is like if you disconnect your battery, you put a new battery in your vehicle, in your Jeep or whatever, you put a new battery in, you've disconnected the cables and put them back. That indicates that sometime within the past 50 starts, that you've disconnected the battery. The 33, again, very common if your Jeep does not have air conditioning or you've got the air conditioning disconnected. Well, this Jeep right here is as base model as base model can get. So I do not have air at all. Never even came with the option to have air conditioning. If I want air conditioning, I'm taking the top off this thing. So 12 and 33 are very common, will happen about every time. So you can kind of disregard them. The 13 is, uh, let me look at my sheet real quick, shows me a uh, no change in uh, map sensor, no change in manifold absolute pressure sensor. What happens is the map sensor reads a uh, vacuum signal from your intake manifold and from what that indicates from the time I started it to the time it ran there was no manifold pressure change. That can indicate map sensor went bad or I got a leak in a vacuum line or the vacuum line could come completely off, one of the two. The 62, I'm going to have to research that one because that's just crazy. Uh, according to the sheet, it says PCM, no, 62, yeah, 62. PCM failure, SRI mild not stored. What? Or EMR mileage cannot be stored in EEPROM. Yeah, that's definitely some Google time. I have no idea what the heck that's about. All right, that's enough of the rambling. I'm going to show you guys how to trigger the codes. Now, remember these. Write these down right now. Write down the 1, 2. Write down the 33. Write down the 1, 3. And the 62. And watch the flashes on the dash as we go through this procedure. And you'll see where the 1, 2 comes from. You'll see where the 33, the 13, so on, so on. Anyway, write those down so you can watch the flashes and you'll see where they come from. All right, let's do this. All right, everyone, looking at the dash of the YJ, here's what we got. Key is in the off position. Look real close. Lock. See the little thing? It's in the off position. This is the point where you can pull the key out, you know, go in the house, whatever it is. You just got home from work, home from the grocery store, movies, whatever. Anyway, the key is in the off position. 
what's going to happen? We're going to take the key. Go one, two, three, and we'll turn it on for the third position. Leave it. Again, it's off position. On, off, on, off, on. Pull your hand away. Leave it. What's going to happen? Each time you turn the keys off, of course your dash lights will go off. Each time you turn it on, of course the dash lights will come on. That third time that you pull your hand away from that key, two dash lights over here will stay on for a moment. They'll go away pretty quick enough. The check engine light will stay on for a moment. When that check engine light goes off, and the next time it comes on, that's when it's telling you the codes. So you know, the first one on this thing's been at 12. It's going to flash once. Short pause. One, two, that's my 12. So let's get this on. On, off, on, off, on. Now watch the dash lights. And that goes up. Now it's going to tell itself. One, short pause. One, two. There's a 12. Just long pause. One, two, three. Short pause, one, two, three, long pause, one, short pause, one, two, three, thirteen. That was a six, and that was a two. Now, one, two, three, four, five. Short pause. One, two, three, four, five. Stops. Whenever you got two consecutive five counts, it goes five, short pause, five. That means it's at the end of its diagnostic mode. It's got, that's all I can tell you at this point. So that means it's all over with. So at this point, I want to look at my diagnostic sheet, what well, I told you that a few moments ago, about the 12 and the 33, the 13 and the 62, and from what I'm gathering, I still need to invest, investigate that 62, that I've got a bad map sensor. So I may end up running to the store picking one up here in a minute, we'll find out. But before I do, I'll look at that map sensor, make sure I don't have a vacuum line off or something. So I'll be back with you in a bit. All right, everyone, on the last shot, I showed you how to make the computer tell you the diagnostics code, and it pointed toward a bad map, sen map sensor. And here's the deal. Valve cover. I want to show you where the map sensor's at. Here's the valve cover. There's where you put oil in. Follow it back. Follow it back. Boom! There it is. See right at the end of my finger? There is a map sensor. Uh, see the Power brake booster, come across. I mean, he's right there on the firewall. It's kind of hard to miss. So, let me get around here and show you guys a little something, a little more detail. Alright, if you want to go changing it out, what you got to do, you got the green plug right there, and you've got the screws here and the screw there green plug like I just pointed out in the vacuum line. That's how I recently changed them. They're so brain dead simple. They're very simple. Order of removing. Unplug this. Be careful that clip right there. You see obviously that it was cold. Old brackets. I mean old uh, plastic here. It just, I mean the thing just broke. So I'm hoping I don't get no issues out of that. I may end up taking a wire tie wrap around all that to hold that plug up in there. I'd hate for that thing to come off on the road. That would suck. But back to the point. In order of removing this, pull your plug, pull your vacuum line. Now you got this grab it and pull straight down. Just grab it and pull straight down, but be careful with it so you don't break anything. Just you get it, squeeze hold of it, work it back and forth a little bit, and pull it down as you work it down. Then you take out the screw, take out this screw, and this this particular one right here has nuts on the bottom side of it. Yours may or may not. Uh, figure out your own wrench size because sometimes people change them out. But, I mean, that's pretty much if you get your wrenches. It's not that hard. So, then to put it back in, put your new map sensor in, mount it, you do the two screws, make sure they're good and snug, plug up your vacuum line, plug up your plug, and you have just installed a map sensor.
See, that wasn't so hard. Alright, everybody. Well, I went you through, walked you through the diagnostics codes, walked you kind of sort of point out how to change out the map sensor. And that's about all I can do for this episode. So, everyone, if you like my video, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And the best thing I can tell you guys now, have a great day. Peace out, y'all. See ya.